In Africa here, even by the age of four, you learn how to fight. This is our tradition. If you don't know, fight with the sticks, with the spear, with the arrows. That's the tradition. So if you are trying to think that this may disorient them psychologically and so on, that is not the case. They are never deployed until the right age. But they learn, they learn the, the skills of warfare. To a layman, it would sound both insane and ridiculous, having to believe that 41 men armed with only 27 guns could possibly begin a struggle and in the end manage to overcome a sitting government, one which had been in power for at least three years. This is because with only 27 guns and 41 people against a gallant government force armed with the latest ammunition and skilled war veterans, the results of such an attack could only be negative, especially in a situation where the rebels have no intelligence at all, as the case was with the NRA forces. We were hoping that we would capture arms in Kavamba when we attacked them, because those were guns we had kept there after the Fronasa war, after the 1979 war. In the negotiations with the guards at the quarter guard, I think they, they, they didn't understand each other. There was a misunderstanding, which we didn't know where it originated, but at least General Tumwini fired the bullet. And when he fired this bullet, the corporal, the Tanzanian corporal who was guarding the Amara, rushed into the Amara. Kwahiyo, kwa mfano Karuma, tume, tume, karibu siku kumi, tuko karibu pare, tunasonga pole pole, pole pole, pole pole, mpaka adui mwenye wa nachoka. But this was not to be. They beat all odds and claimed the victory. Sadly, only 11 of the 41 NRA warriors who attacked Kabamba barracks still live. These include incumbent Yowerika Guta Museveni, who led the struggle, General Eli Tumwine, who fired the first bullet at Kabamba that started off the war, Colonel Fred Mwesije, a former commander of several units in the army, General Paul Kagame, the London president, Brigadier Andrew Rutaya, General Salim Salim, also known as Kaleba Kanduanaho, Andrew Kangaho, Colonel Julius Chihandi, Guderia Chakabari, and Jackson Wachunguzi. Many died, by the way, of those with whom we started. Like those are the 27 or the 41. Those who died, those who were injured, those who suffered, did not suffer for nothing. In Korea was in my unit, suicide. in Nkuruma, suicide, we attacked Kavamba together. There was in Dayondi. Yeah, I believe that they died for a justifiable cause. It's been betrayed, but that doesn't uh, negate the issue of uh, uh, them having died for a cause that they believed in, which we all believed in, which to me I think was a, a correct cause. Only three of these got the rank of Major General when the former ranks were introduced in 1988, and these were Yuwerika Guta Museveni, Eli Tumwini, and the late Fred Rijema. Other than Andrew Rutaya and Andrew Kangaho, who was then 15 years old, the other men were highly trained and experienced fighters, all of who had either served in the front for national liberation struggle or the Uganda National Liberation Army. We had the cause. It's not to uh, just uh, hold guns or what, but there was a cause. There were a number of contradictions, there's no doubt about that. But we had uh, capability to manage those internal contradictions because we still had open meetings, open forum where we would discuss. Profound note, however, about the NRA struggle is that after the Kabamba attack, where the fighters managed to harvest over 600 rifles, the struggle was joined by several other fighters who, together with the 41, managed to sustain the war for five years in the bush. But what would have kept the struggle going for all those years without retaliation? from unit commanders. I know that we survived because the population protected us. So they are the ones who give us food, they are the ones who give us uh, intelligence information, they are the ones who shift us from one location to another because we didn't know. According to General Eddie Tumwini, 
a Swahili phrase, Mzee Anapanga, literally meaning the old man is strategizing while referring to Museveni, kept a majority of the fighters focused. Though the dictatorial policies and abuse of human rights then were also a major push factor for the fighters. The famous uh, word that I think kept everybody going was Muzea Napanga. Even when there were difficulties, you would tell the soldiers that don't worry, we know, trust the president, trust our leader, by then uh, he's organizing Muzea Napanga. What he tells you today, you'll prove that it will be correct, even after 20 years. Once he say this is correct, once this is wrong, you report prove it is wrong, even if you don't agree with him now. The biggest challenge the NRA fighters had, according to Mayor General Mugisha Mundu, was lack of numbers, ammunition, food, and intelligence equipment to coordinate with each other in the bush during any attack on their bases. You'd get an intelligence network, people riding on bicycles, moving from one point to another, relaying information to the people who were the, the intelligence cell where we were. On January 10, 1985, over 15,000 NRA fighters, including most of the top commanders, like Chairman of the High Command, the Warrior 7, the Commander of Mobile Force, Salim Saleh, Commander of the 1st Battalion, Pekos Kutesa, Commander of the 3rd Battalion, the late Patrick Lumumba, and others were attacked by UNLS soldiers under the command of the ruthless Colonel John Ogole. Several lives were lost here, though according to those still surviving, the cause was worth dying for. We were organizing the people and we were convincing the population. You know, it is, some of you think it is easy, but it was difficult you know, to tell people that you please join us. Even if you die, you will die for a good cause. That would be after educating the people. We had very few intellectuals who joined from Makere, the General Muntu, General Tumukunde, you know, Brigade Tumukunde, and um, Many others, let's say Wanga Wanga, all those came, they were both fought with them. Others have died. They joined us, and it was a very good boost. They became political commissars, they became intelligence officers, some became commanders. During the struggle, the NRA fighters came up with the 10 points program, which they said would guide the leadership once they came to power. Though, according to Mugisha Muntu, some of them later became disillusioned after the party failed to leave to some. Of these points. I think gradually as the president became more and more uh, confronted with the issue of having to move out of the political system and operate from outside of it and uh, new people come up in leadership, I think he failed to meet that challenge front on. But I think it's a gross betrayal both of the politics that informed the founding of NRA and certainly there is um, a gross mismanagement and misdirection of the UPDF. I don't think we have lost focus. It would be very unfair for anybody in Uganda to say that NRA has lost focus. These comrades of ours who have decided to leave lack discipline and they lack patience. Thank <laughs> you.